In a previous video, we created an HTML page and we added the TimeLeaf tag library into it so we could use some of the attributes that come in that TH library. In this video, we're going to modify this HTML page so that we can accept information about the specimen and we can then store that specimen. Now, this is the first screen in our application and one thing we want to think about is that we want to put valuable content on this screen. Whatever the user came to our application to do should be on this first screen. We don't want to splash screen, a main menu screen, or anything like that. Just take them right into where the action is. What I call the Shazam approach. If you've ever used Shazam, open it up, press, you hear the song. So after the existing page, which is just showing the specimen, I'm going to create a form which will allow us to have some fields where the user can enter data. So form action. Action usually means where we're submitting it, but in this case, using time leaf, we're just going to say pound, which is a shortcut for the local page because we don't want to use that action attribute. Instead, we want to use the th action attribute, which comes with our th library. So th action, we're going to, going to say inside the quotes, at symbol, open curly, and then slash save specimen. And that is essentially our endpoint. Now we'll say th colon object equals, and then double quote, inside the double quotes, dollar sign curly specimen. What that means is this is the object that we're populating. And then method equals get, which as you remember is one of those HTTP methods. So the form tag, we want to do a separate open and close form because we're saying that anything inside of here is going to get submitted as one unit. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, we're starting to get kind of big here, so I'm going to indent this just a bit. And there we go. And now inside, we'll say latitude. I'll tell you what, let's wrap this in the label tag. That's one of those things we will appreciate a lot more in a little bit. So label, and then we'll simply say latitude. And after that, the input field. So input type equals text, name equals latitude, and then th colon, oh my gosh, sorry, let me fix this. There we go. Uh, th colon field. So this is, remember that th, the th attributes are our server side rendering. So th field equals double quote, and then inside the double quotes, asterisk curly latitude, close curly. Now, what does that mean? Asterisk curly latitude close curly. Well, it's looking at this specimen here and it's realizing that latitude is an attribute of the specimen because we have the little asterisk here. So we'll follow the same pattern for several other items that describe our specimen. I, I, I'll pause the video and do that just because it's a bit of copy paste. I also notice I have an extra double quote here, which is giving me some red lines. So uh, just a moment and these will be updated. And there we are. One more thing we need on this page is a button. So let's say button name equals submit type equals submit value equals zero and then submit in between the button. Okay, great. So that takes care of our HTML form. We could probably add some more text like enter a new specimen, something like that. But one thing that you'll notice is that we have it mapped to the save specimen endpoint. And so we need to make that now. So in our controller, we'll make a new request mapping. And we said save specimen. And we'll say public void save specimen. Now, here's the interesting thing. We saw before that we could create a specimen and we could provide that to our page simply by adding it to a model, adding it as an attribute to our model. So what if we're going in the other direction? What if a specimen object is getting submitted to us? How do we deal with that? Well, it's actually quite straightforward. All we have to do is edit this method signature to say specimen, specimen, and then it will get populated there. Do just a couple other changes. We'll change this return type to a string, and we're going to go ahead and have it return that start page again, with the idea being that since that's the page where the users want to be 80% of the time, let's return them back to that page if possible, instead of giving them a separate confirmation page, which means they have to click away and so on and so forth. So we'll do that like so. Another thing we can do if we want is we can borrow some logic from this post mapping 
and we can say specimen service save specimen. So you see a lot of that stuff that we tested out earlier by using Postman and a lot of the uh, service in DAO that we built earlier, we're now able to use. Now, it is going to require a try catch. Uh, so I, I'm going to do something I shouldn't do and just kind of ignore that catch. But since we're dealing with mock date at this point anyway, it's highly unlikely a serious exception would occur. Now let's take a look at what happens when we start the application and render the page. You can see that we have latitude, longitude, description, and plan. And in hindsight, I'm going to go back and add some line break tags so that these will each appear on a different line, make it a little more visually appearing, appealing. But nonetheless, watch what happens. Let's make this a Greenland plane, which would be about 64 degrees latitude. Uh, longitude, we'll say just uh, minus 95. Description, we'll call it the... Ar Arctic Poppy. Plant ID 85. Watch what happens when we choose Submit. You notice that the part that we did in a previous video updates. So these things are essentially one and the same and you get that immediate feedback that the data that you entered, sure enough, appeared down here. Now as promised, I paused the video for a moment and I added in those break tags. I also added a new item for the specimen ID. I tested this out with the Arctic Poppy. Let's go ahead and make a new plan. We'll make this specimen ID 80, and we will call it the dwarf fireweed, well, which is also a plant that you'll find in Greenland. So we'll bump a couple other things here, maybe give it a slightly different latitude and a slightly different longitude as well, and then press submit. Now you remember we wired this up to the service and the DAO that we created in a prior video. So just out of curiosity, let's come over here and hit the get endpoint that shows us all of our plants in our collection. And take a look. Sure enough, you see the Arctic poppy that we started with, the one I created when I paused the video, and finally, the dwarf fireweed that we just created together. I've snapped a breakpoint so that we can create one more and we can watch it together. We'll just call this one the normal fire fireweed, make it ID 87 and specimen 79, and submit. And you notice that IntelliJ lights up in orange, so we take a look at that. If I mouse over the specimen, you can see in that kind of tooltip text, you can see all of the attributes that we just put together, including the description of fireweed. Notice we're in the plant diary controller, but also notice that I'm on the line that's calling down to specimen service. So when I press F7, we go into specimen service stub, and then we're on a line where we're calling specimen DAO save. So I press F7 again, and sure enough, here we go. We're getting our specimen ID. We're using that as the key for our map, and then we're putting our specimen into the map and associating that with the key, and then we return. Now, if I go back to the controller, I can put one more breakpoint on the git mapping that shows us all of our results, which is fairly straightforward, just like so. Come back to that page, hit refresh. We see once again, IntelliJ lights up orange. This one will be straightforward. Controller F7. F7 takes us into the service layer, which is calling the DAO. F7 again takes us into that DAO. You see it's returning a list essentially that has four elements in it. So we press F9 and we come back and see that manifest of all of the specimens we've created so far. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.